dear colleagues, uh, I would like to present our initial clinical experience with a new FRAT X device. And let us uh, quickly start with a, a view on the design of the stent. So the FRAT X is uh, mechanically identical to the FRAT uh, flow diverter with an optimized uh, design, a unique dual filler construction providing both the ease of use and an excellent flow diverting effect. In addition, there is an immediate stable opening and uh, a very safe and stable deployment. And this is due to this finished ends on each side of the stand or flared ends. And also there is an excellent visibility of the stand, which is due to the markers on each side. There are four radio pack markers and two tantalum strands along the stand. So you see this uh, high radio opacity here, uh, which is, uh, which provides a safe deployment. So even in difficult localizations like the, the skull base, Petrus uh, portion of the, or cavernous portion of the ICA, you, you reliably see the stent. As I said, there is an ease of use with a simple deployment technique and a very predictable and consistent device opening. And coming to this uh, finished or flared ends on each side, which is unique for the FRED and for the FRED X, this is frequently of advantage, especially in the supraophthalmic localization, as you can see here. In that case, you can exactly tailor your flow diverting part of the stent and, for example, cover the origin of the ophthalmic artery with these flared ends or place the fla flared ends in the carotid T without closing the A1 segment. When we have a closer look on the design, there is this uh, dual filler or double layer design, which is nicely illustrated in that uh, microscopic image. It's even an interwoven design of the, of the wires. The guide wires uh, are out of 19 hole at two different diameters, a large diameter providing mechanical stability and conformability of the stent and a fine wire mesh providing the metal service coverage and the flow diverting effect. And of course, all this smooth and electro polish like uh, state of the art stands uh, today are. And uh, this high efficacy or that complete occlusion rates uh, of more than 90% after one year follow up is uh, very impressively documented for the FRED. You see here one of our cases, uh, some uh, aneurysms, intradural blister-like aneurysms, a patient with a positive family history. And after flow diverter treatment, you see here a nice remodeling of the artery uh, with occlusion of the aneurysms. And here a pretty similar case in a short follow-up, you have a complete occlusion and a, a very good remodeling of the stent. Compared to the FRED, the FRED X is available even in a more extended sizing and uh, more longer length. So like the FRED Junior, there is a FRED X21 system going through a Headway 21 microcatheter and uh, the larger one, the FRED X27 system. You see here the, the percentage of uh, metal coverage or flow diverting uh, effect. And you see here the available sizes. So overall, the diameters go from 2.5 millimeters up to 5.5. And you could have available a very small stand of a working length of eight millimeter up uh, to 56 millimeters of uh, length. So there's a, a really uh, extended portfolio in sizing available. Most uh, important is the X technology. That means that the stent uh, is, has a, a bio-inert surface treatment that uh, enhances the deliverability of the FRED X. And this is uh, due to an amphiphilic polymer structure. So that means uh, that water is attracted, forming, as you can see here in that schematic drawing, a protective boundary layer uh, on the FRED X device. Uh, preventing a direct contact to the device and overall significantly enhancing the deliverability of the stent. So the FREDX goes really smoothly through the one micro catheter. And this is a, a closer look on that uh, uh, surface or on that coating. Actually, this is a refined development. Uh, Terumo has studied for more than 20 or 30 years. They use that in uh, uh, 
hematology products, <clears throat> in oncology products, in uh, uh, implants, temporary implants. So this is very well studied and uh, adapted to neurovascular applications and resulting in a covalent surface modification, which is permanent on the device and which covers the, the, the complete uh, implant in a nanometer thin application. So nanometer, this is uh, less than 10 nanometers, uh, meaning 0.02% of the diameter of the large wires. So this is very or ultra thin. And uh, this transfers uh, in clinical application in low delivery forces. So it's a much easier tracking. And this is what we also see in our cases yet, uh, that uh, this is really easy to push especially, and you all know these cases where you have uh, torches anatomy uh, at the aortic arch and especially at the skull base. So this is really an advantage. If we compare on the benchmark, it's uh, less than one third of push force necessary for the FREDX compared to the FRED. But now let's go into the, the clinical cases. Uh, as I said, it's an initial clinical experience. We started in October last year, so it's only a short uh, time period we overview uh, up to now. This was our first case, a 60-year-old woman uh, with a, a large P1 aneurysm. You see that there is a space occupying effect on the brainstem. Uh, the patient was symptomatic due to, the, to that aneurysm. We have a a, a small aneurysm neck. So of course we can only coil embolize that aneurysm, but we know that the durability of coil embolization, especially if there is a, also a thrombose part in this aneurysm uh, present like here is limited. So we decided for a stent assisted procedure, we decided to go for a flow diverter. <clears throat> you see that we picked uh, a small stand, a Fred X21 at a very, uh, short working length of eight millimeter, and we exactly tailored that at the neck with the advantage that these finished or flared ends with no flow diverting effect covers the perforate arteries at the P1 segment. So uh, we intended to, to do this like this. You see our final result, pretty good occlusion. And uh, this is the post-interventional MRI. We routinely do, or we try to do in all of our patients, and you see that there are no ischemic lesions on, on the DVI or DWI scan. And you see here also the thrombose parts. And this is already the follow-up. It's a non-invasive follow-up after three months using MRA. And we you routinely use our flat panel technology after intravenous contrast for follow-up. So of course we have some artifacts to this large coil basket, but I think you can all see that this looks fine, that there is no recognition after three months. And now we decide to stop Clobidogrel and schedule the patient for a follow-up after six months, which, which is still to be awaited. Second case, an ICA aneurysm, as you can see here, in a patient with a supernate hemorrhage. A few or two weeks ago, coil embolized, coil embolized, but only partially embolized in an external hospital, then re hemorrhaged and now transferred to our hospital. Uh, you see this broad neck, uh, not an ideal anatomy, so clearly you need uh, help of a stent. Uh, we also go for flow diverters in the acute setting with a pre medication of several hours. You see here already the Fredix implanted very well visible, uh, covering the broad neck in a chailing technique occluded uh, or occlusion of, the, of that residual aneurysm. Uh, in this patient, we do not have a follow-up, so this patient has still to recover. Uh, and this is uh, another case, a large paraphthalmic IC aneurysm treated already eight years ago with a stent-assisted technique with a neuroform and coils. And over the time, recanalized and now became symptomatic again. Uh, so no rupture, but symptoms. And uh, here you see that we implanted the FREDX within the neuroform. We tailored that stent uh, better visible here. So again, a short stent, nicely visible and recoiling of the aneurysm. And also the diffusion weight scan post-interventional did not show any lesions. So that might be by accident, but we keep that for the next cases. This is the follow-up of this patient again after three months with MRI and flat panel imaging. 
uh, still a stable result and uh, we await the six month follow up. And uh, this is one of the Heidelberg cases, uh, courtesy by Marcus Mürnbruch. A uh, pretty similar aneurysm, a large uh, carotid aneurysm. Uh, again, a chailing technique. You see here the opening of the stand distally, and then the full coil embolization of the aneurysm, and a nice result here on the lateral view. And this is their diffusion scan, and they have the same impression that their diffusion control a few days or one day usually after the intervention uh, show significantly less DVE lesions uh, compared to that what we see in the literature. But of course, this is still an impression and has to be evaluated in further cases. This is one of our next cases, uh, superarnate hemorrhage due to an ACOM aneurysm. Uh, coil embolized, and then according to the guideline, we decided to treat that second non-ruptured aneurysm, intradural, supraophthalmic, uh, very easy treatment for a flow diverter. You see here the Fredix implanted, uh, the post-interventional control, again, no DWI lesion. Uh, next patient, uh, a vertebral artery aneurysm at the pica origin, a broad neck, so we decided to go for a stent-assisted uh, treatment. This patient had already treated uh, an ICA aneurysm and still left uh, to treat an MCA aneurysm. And here for the, the pica aneurysm, again, a chailing technique. So you see here the microcatheter, the headway placed uh, up uh, in the basilar artery. Here already a coil looped in the aneurysm, not fully deployed. Then we deliver the stent, as you can see here. And then we coil embolize the aneurysm and then we remove all the catheters and we see here a nice result. And when you have a, a, a close look here at this uh, ICAR, you see here again the flared ends uh, covering that uh, perforator or anterior inferior cerebral artery and not a flow diverting part over that uh, perforating artery, which is of advantage. And here also we did not see any DWI lesion. This is the follow up. And as we see after th three months, uh, it looks pretty fine and stable occlusion and also within the stent, no stenosis. And again, a pretty similar case, again from Heidelberg, uh, treated in the same way, uh, chailing technique, anchoring the coil, placing the flow diverter stent and coil embolize the aneurysm with a very good result uh, in the final run. And this is their diffusion scan one day after the implantation of the stent. So this was uh, one of our recent cases, small ICA aneurysm, distal at the ICA, uh, irregularly configured. So we decided to treat uh, with, a, with a flow diverter. And this is our planning tool within the NGO. You, so you see uh, the planning of the stent in a virtual situation. Uh, where you can exactly localize the stand. And this is the final real result. It looks pretty the same. So you see, again, we, we decided to go for a small length uh, Fredix, a Fredix 27 at a diameter of 4.0. And this is a pretty straightforward and easy procedure. You see here that the anterior choroidal artery is uh, covered with a flare dance, finished dance. So no flow diverting effect on this very important artery. And uh, what we frequently see after flow diverters that we have already a stasis of contrast in that uh, aneurysm here, that tiny aneurysm, which uh, is delayed until the venous phase and which is a prognostic good sign that we have uh, a pretty fast occlusion of that aneurysm. And also in this patient, we await uh, the, the further follow-up. And also in this patient, we had no DWI lesion. And this was our recent uh, patient, a paraophthalmic aneurysm, uh, mid-size uh, neck. Uh, you can discuss if this patient really needs treatment since it's probably extra dural, but this uh, woman wanted to have treatment. And uh, here you see the, the treatment, uh, again, a chailing technique. Sometimes it's difficult to catheterize this aneurysm due to the angle, but here it uh, we, we could make it. So we combined coils and the stent, otherwise we would only have used the flow diverter. Uh, you see here the flow diverter and the coils, the final result, very well visible, the Fredix uh, with these radio pack markers. And this is the 3D and the final result. So 
I think up to now we can uh, conclude that the FredX is a, a, a very easy to use uh, flow diverter like the FRED. It's uh, predictable uh, in the placement and with a very consistent and reliable device opening. There's an excellent visibility uh, due to that uh, radio pack markers and the tantalum strands, even in difficult localizations like the skull base where flow diverters, you might know these cases where it's really difficult, is it open and the second plane, this is not a problem uh, for the FRED and for the FREDX. Really an advantage in the clinical setting is this uh, much improved uh, deliverability of the stand, so there is significantly less push force and we had uh, some of these cases where we had a difficult access, elongated arteries up uh, to the aneurysm, especially in the carotids. And uh, we did not have any technical problems, problems bringing up that stand to the, to the precise localization. And finally, that might be at the, at the moment a too strong conclusion, but this is uh, at least our impression and we can quantify that for the, the cases uh, done up to now in Erlangen and in Heidelberg, uh, where we share our results. So we see less uh, DWI lesions on the post-interventional MRI compared to that, what we are used uh, for other procedures or what is documented in the literature. So I'm really uh, curious uh, on the follow-up uh, and you saw that our three-month follow-up data, non-invasive but in a good quality, uh, showed promising results. And I'm interested in what's, uh, what, what uh, will follow-up show. So I thank you very much for your attention.